If you guys are filming your first interview video, whether it's for a corporate video, brand, documentary, or any kind of video that requires an interview, then I'm gonna show you guys some tips that's gonna help you with it. All right guys, check this out. What's up guys, Ben from Camera to Freedom where you use your camera to take photos and videos and YouTube videos. That way you can live a life of freedom using just your camera and doing what you love. And if that's what you're all about, hit that like and subscribe and let's go. I'm gonna make this video as short as possible, but I wanted to share with you guys on how to shoot interview videos. I've been shooting videos for 20 years now, it's a long time, and there are some things that you kinda have to be aware of. So I'm gonna share with you guys some tips from camera lights, audio, and techniques. That way you can get the best interview video that you can possibly get. All right guys, so tip number one, cameras. Okay, so I highly recommend at least using two cameras for your interview video. There are times that I've just came with one camera because I'm shooting by myself. It's like a one-man project, small project. And sometimes I kind of would get lazy and just bring one camera, but that's a bad idea. Always bring two cameras. The first angle, of course, is going to be medium, whether it's going to be from the chest to the head or a little bit wider. And the second camera angle will be a lot tighter. This is good because if you need to cut some of their audio out, instead of cutting, abruptly cutting, you could cut into the second camera angle and make it look natural. If you only have one camera angle, I use this cheap technique of just cutting and then just zooming in, scaling the video and using that as my second camera angle. Sure, it sometimes works, but the bad part about it is that you're zooming into your video and you're losing that quality that your video camera gives you, right? If I'm shooting in HD and I zoom in, that's not good, right? So you don't want to do that. Second camera is also good as backup. You never know. In this world, things break. Every once in a blue moon, a memory card will just corrupt. A camera will just break for no reason at all. Something weird, crazy happens. If that ever happens, at least you have a second camera with the video that you can use and you could just do your uh, magic edit to save that video. But I'm telling you, you're gonna come across some cr crazy time when one of the cameras just breaks for no reason at all. And of course, when you're using your camera, I highly recommend using a prime or at least an aperture F 2.8 so that you could blur out the background. That way, it doesn't really matter where you shoot. If you could just find that one little square area and you kind of blur it out a little bit and then you kind of go around and you bring plants or lights or any kind of small little fixture that could design just that one little area you don't have to design this whole area right when you come into the scene angle that i'm shooting right now the, all i need to really worry about is just what's behind me you don't even see the trash that's on the left side or couch that's not even fixed up right now so that way you only focus on that one square area and using that higher aperture could also help soften the background and make it look very pleasing all right so tip number two audio wireless mic so you want to bring a wireless mic and you also want to bring a boom mic for your second camera so wireless mic for your main camera and you could either use a tape to tape the mic into their chest area and hide it underneath the shirt or you can just clip it to the side on the lapel and sometimes it's not a big deal that you do see a wireless mic because maybe the video is just for internal purposes. A lot of the companies out there, they're just going to share that video to their own uh, company. So maybe it's not too important to really hide that microphone, but that's totally up to you. A second mic, a boom mic, something like this is perfect for your second camera. That's a little bit closer to the speaker. And that way, if your wireless mic for some reason doesn't work or you know once again corrupt or anything like that you have a backup this boom mic isn't as clear as a wireless a lapel mic but it will still do the job you will still get some audio that you can do some magic and edit clear out the background noise and get a good audio out of it so i highly recommend it and also don't forget always use a headphone back in the days i made a mistake of using a headphone then dropping it and just thinking that it's going to be okay because normal no, normally it'll be okay most of the time it things will just work out but sometimes maybe a battery of one of the wireless mic is is out or something corrupts or the feed there's a weird static sound something crazy could happen so always have the headphone on and listen to your audio as they're speaking so you know for sure that you got good quality audio recorded into your video next tip lights lights is so important if you think that you're gonna go into an interview video and have no lights and rely on the uh, 
lights that's around the building, man, it's gonna, it's not gonna look good. It's very unflattering. If you don't bring your own lights, your video is gonna look like this, which isn't too bad. I mean, it's not a deal breaker. Luckily, I'm in a position where I do have a window right here that kind of lights me a little bit, and it is lit up kind of nicely, but you're not able to control your light. You wanna control your light so you get the best looking video you could possibly get. Let's get back into the other video. All right, so one of my favorite light for 2023 is this GVM ST80. It's an 80 watt power, but it could also power with an NPLP battery, just like this. So in the past, all my NP battery powered mono light like this was 60 watt. That was the strongest one. Anything beyond that, like 150, I got 150 watt. I have a 300 watt uh, power light. They can't handle this kind of battery. They're too strong. They have to be plugged in. So a lot of times when I'm shooting by myself or have a small crew, I like to be mobile because their interviews are happening in multiple locations and I kind of need to carry all my gears around and be a little bit more mobile. And some locations might not have a power connector nearby. So having a battery power light for your interview video is such a lifesaver. So this is, to me, the strongest you can get, an 80 watt that can be powered by NP battery. So that's cool. Second thing that's really cool about this is that it's super quiet. So I'm gonna turn this on. It's right next to the microphone right here. You can't even hear it. The fan is so quiet. Right now, I'm using my older 60 watt light and that is so loud. I, I don't really like to use them because you could really hear it. I'm hearing it right now and I'm gonna have to use edit to kind of get that noise out the way, but I'm gonna put this mic right by it to let you hear how that sounds. All right? So that sound kind of bugs me. I have used it in many of my shoots, but you know, it kind of like, oh man, the speaker could hear it. It kind of bugs me a little bit. So anyways, I love how quiet this one is. So that's a plus. It comes with a seven inch reflector right over here. I bought this little diffuser from Amazon. I'm gonna put the uh, link for everything that I'm sharing with you uh, below. And if you do buy from a link, I appreciate you so very much. Um, so this diffuser is really cool. So on top of using this for all my interviews, I also take it to all my weddings. It's nice to have it just like this with a little diffuser on top, put it on a tripod, and the great thing about it is that it runs off of your phone app. It connects very easily to your phone. So I love shooting weddings with this thing because it'll be on top of a tripod and all of a sudden they're like, okay guys, we're gonna do the speech, we're gonna do the first dance. So instead of me running over there, taking the tripod down, turning it on and putting it back up and just dealing with that whole mess, I just take my phone out and simply just turn it on or off. So that's really cool. It doesn't have all the RGB colors, but it has the ability to control your warmth and the coolness of the video line. And of course, you could use this to control the strength of your light all the way. I, I mean, you could tell how strong this is. I wanna go full blast and just to show you how blown out things get. It's crazy. The strength is, I love it. It's just right, it's just right. It's not too crazy like 150, 300 watt which that is super powerful. This is just enough for me to get my interview videos and for me to take it to weddings and anything else that needs professional lighting. So I love that. And with the app, it's got some cool effects. It, you know, I'm not getting this light for the effects, honestly, because there are RGB color lights that gives you like a full police siren and ambulance and things like that, but at least they give you an option for you to do things like lightning, paparazzi, it's kind of neat. It does give you some effects. That's kind of nice of them to just add that when they didn't really have to. So that's really neat. So I do love the fact that they do have a bundle for $1.99. I sound like I'm selling something, I swear to God. For $1.99, they give you the light, they give you the tripod, they give you a softbox, and they give you a honeycomb grid, which I absolutely love. Without the honeycomb grid and you're just using the softbox, the light tends to kind of spill over and just light up maybe the background also. But with a grid, it really focuses on just me without having to light up my background because I already got it all set up with my lights and everything, right? So it's perfect for you to just be able to light just your subject. And it gives you a dramatic light too. I really love the way the grid, honeycomb grid looks. It's a game changer if you have never used it. So I definitely recommend that set. Make it easy. Just get that one set. Your lights are done. So thank you if you do buy from the link below. 
All right guys, so the last and final tip is teleprompters. I use my iPad for as a teleprompter. So there are a bunch of free apps that call, is called teleprompter that you can use so that way your, cust your client could read off of the teleprompter. There's also little remote controls that's very inexpensive in Amazon that allows you to control your iPad. So that way you could push play and then stop and then you could scroll back up if they mess up. And it's so convenient because during the shoot, a client would mess up and without that remote, I would normally go up there and then go up to the teleprompter, scroll up, and then are you ready? Push play and then run back to my camera and make sure everything's okay. So I'm just running back and forward. That's kind of tedious. But with the remote, you could just stay over there. You could look over to the teleprompter, boom, 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 fix it, and you're good to go. So I highly recommend that remote control. I will put that link below as well too. There's two methods of shooting the interview. They could look directly at the camera that as, as I'm doing right now. To me, I love it when the client looks at the camera, if they have messages, they wanna tell directly to the client. Hey, check this out, this is what I'm gonna do. Boom, then you talk to the client directly. But if they're telling a story, like a documentary style, it's always nice to just have it in an angle like this and as if they're having an interview with somebody and make sure you either it's yourself or maybe an assistant that they're talking to. So that way they feel more natural uh, when they're speaking. So that's the good thing about an off angle interview like this. Also, have them stand. Most of the time, it's the most flattering to do if they're standing because a lot of the times it's very awkward for someone to sit down and the chair just isn't perfect enough. It's kind of awkward and they're kind of leaning back and, you know, just they look really just uncomfortable. I even had a video where a client sent over and their interview was on a desk, background all messy, and they're just sitting like this answering questions like this. I could not believe it. I, yeah. Anyway, so don't do that for sure. So... Definitely have them look as comfortable as possible. And the cool thing about teleprompter is that you could have them say the exact lines that you're gonna put into your video, done. You know what they're gonna say, easy to cut and edit. But half the time, the client wants to just freestyle talk. The good thing is that it's more natural, they get to really speak their mind. But the downfall is that I've had interviews where they're talking forever, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just for me to get like three lines out of them. So that could be a really, that could be a lot of work for you uh, if you go that route, but the positive is that they sound more natural. Otherwise they're gonna be reading and they're just gonna, you know, look left and right and they sound, they look like they're reading something. And when they do read the teleprompter, make sure that they're reading when the text is in the middle of the teleprompter. They're not looking down or looking up. They're just like right at the camera level. All right guys, so that concludes my video. That's just a short tip on how to shoot interview videos for all your company, brand, corporate, you know, documentary, all kinds of video. Just go out there and have fun. Feel comfortable doing it. If you do buy anything from my link, thank you so much for the support. I appreciate you so much for that. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I will answer 100%. I will, you know, if you got any questions, I would love to help. That's, that's what we're here to do. That's what life is about. You take a journey in learning about things and then when you can, help other people grow. So that's what life is all about to me. So leave a comment, hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.